The purpose of Micromatic is to give you practice in running a small manufacturing business. You will make decisions similar to what managers typically make when they're running a business and then see the effects of those decisions on how well your business does. As you will discover, managing a business is a very dynamic experience. In this tutorial, I will give you a quick tour around the simulation to help you understand what Micromatic is about. The current page is the login page for Micromatic. I have a demonstration student set up, so I will switch to that student's account to give you an idea of what you will see when you log into your account. After logging into the demonstration student's account, I am taken to the Industry Central screen. The main purpose of this screen is to allow you to choose which of the two versions of Micromatic you wish to play. There is a team version of the simulation that allows you to compete head-to-head -head with other students in your particular course and see who will be the most successful in your industry. In the solo version of Micromatic, you are competing against five computer-managed companies. While these companies are well-managed, they are not unbeatable, so they will provide you with a good test of how well you are managing your company. When you are first starting out, using the solo version is the best way to learn the simulation quickly. Once you know the basics of the solo version, you will be ready to play the team version of Micromatic. After a short wait, the solo version of the Micromatic comes up. On my screen, I can see there are two separate panels that I want to talk about, the Business Advisor and the Micromatic Map. The one I am currently looking at is the Micromatic Map, and this shows you a high-level view of the simulation. Think of this as your roadmap to running your business. You can see the Micromatic map shows you that there are three main areas of your business that you will need to manage. Marketing, operations, and finance. These broad areas are much the same as what managers face as they make decisions in a real business. Micromatic encourages you to take a balanced approach in running your business. Successful managers don't have the luxury of focusing on just one area of the business. They have to balance all areas of the business to ensure that their business is successful. In Micromatic, you're going to have to do the same. Because the Micromatic map is interactive, I can open any of the decision panels or report panels just by clicking on the appropriate icon. To give you a look at what some of the decisions you will make as you manage your company, let me go to the Marketing Decisions panel. Now, I see there are a number of marketing decisions that I can enter regarding my business. I can choose pricing, quality, advertising, web marketing, hiring sales reps, and so on. There are a lot of marketing-related decisions I can make. In operations, you will be making decisions such as hiring and training workers, how many units to produce, and whether to build plants. In finance, your decisions will involve borrowing money, issuing stock dividends, and other things. Wherever you're at, there's help available to you. So, for instance, if you don't understand what one of these decisions is all about, just mouse over that specific decision and help will pop up. Just like in a real business, you can't make your decisions in a vacuum. You have to look at the current status of your business. You need to know what the competition is doing, and you need to understand the marketplace in which you are selling your product. So, before I start entering decisions, I need to get some of that information. To understand how your business is doing within the market, Micromatic provides a series of reports for you to look at. To look at some of these reports, let's go back to the Micromatic map. What we can see from the map is there are a number of different reports in each of the three functional areas of my business. In marketing, I have a marketing research report and a sales and administration report. In operations, I have raw material, workforce, and plant and warehouse reports. As indicated by the arrow, these reports feed into a cost of goods sold report. And as the map also shows, the S&A report and cost of goods sold report provide data for my financial reports, such as the cash flow and income statement. So you can see there's a certain flow of information within the simulation, and this flow is the same flow that occurs in a business in the real world. Let's take a quick look at one of these reports. I am going to choose cost of goods sold. We can see there's a lot of information here. Let me take a few moments and explain what the cost of goods sold shows you. In Micromatic, you're running a small manufacturing company. Right now, this company has manufacturing operations just in Region 1, but it has the option of also producing in Regions 2 and 3. In this student's game, Regions 1 and 2 are in the U.S., and Region 3 is in the European Union, as indicated by the Euro symbol. If desired, your instructor could set up Region 3 to be China. 
If that happens, then the currency symbol will show us the Chinese yuan. The cost of goods sold report shows what it costs to manufacture products in each of the three regions. In this student's cost of goods sold report, I was only producing products in Region 1. I can see the costs for the various components of the manufacturing process, the summary of those costs, and what it costs on a per unit basis. This per unit cost makes it easy for you to compare it with the price you entered on the marketing decision panel to ensure there is a sufficient gap between your selling price for your product and what it costs to manufacture your product. If the gap is too small, you won't earn enough to pay the costs of marketing your product. If you sell your product for $60 but it costs you $58 to make it, you are certain to have a failing business. In Micromatic, as in the real world, this cost of goods sold report is a very important one to you as a manager. If your manufacturing costs per unit are high and or increasing, it is a clear warning that you have inefficiencies in your operations that need to be corrected. One advantage of the reports in Micromatic is that they are live. By that, I mean they are immediately updated every time you enter a decision. This allows you to use Micromatic as a calculator of sorts to see the effects of the decisions that you make. For example, suppose I decided to hire more people. Using Micromatic, I can see exactly how much that's going to cost me. Look at my current hiring costs, which are $15,000. Remember that number. Now I will return to the Micromatic map. Then I will select the Operating Decisions icon and I hire a few more production workers. And now, when I return to my cost of goods sold report, I can see that my hiring costs have changed to reflect the entry I just made. Hiring those additional workers has increased my costs from $15,000 to $30,000, and those additional costs bubble throughout the rest of this report, resulting in an increase in my per unit cost of manufacturing. In fact, there are probably many reports that were affected by that change, such as my workforce report, my income statement, and my cash flow. That's a good lesson to learn. As a business person, when you change one thing in one area of your business, it has a ripple effect throughout your entire business. You need to be aware of those ripple effects so that you're not blindsided by something unexpectedly. Knowing how a change you make impacts all aspects of your business is key to being a successful manager. Once you've made your decisions, you'll need to save them. Saving the decisions is quite easy. We'll just use the Save Decisions link on the Tools menu from the Micromatic map. I can save these decisions either under a new name or leave them labeled as default. I recommend that you watch the video tutorial for saving decisions so that you see all the options available to you. For this tutorial, I'm going to leave them labeled as default and click the Save button. If I'm comfortable with the decisions I've made in running my business, the next step is to process the current quarter and see how I did compared to my competition. This step is unique to the solo version. In the team version, your instructor will process the decisions. This won't happen until all companies in the industry have saved their decisions, so you may have to wait for a while before this happens. For this demonstration, we are using the solo version of Micromatic, so we can process the decisions we have made for the quarter as soon as we are comfortable with our decisions and save them. To process the current quarter in the solo version, just click on the link provided in the Micromatic map. When you are in the team version, this link will not be there. You can also access a link to process a quarter under the industry option on the menu bar. After a short wait, I'm returned to the Micromatic map, and I can now see that I'm in quarter two of the simulation. To see how I did with my first quarter of decisions, I can look at a number of different reports. A good place to start would be the industry performance report. A link to that report is available under the tools section of the Micromatic map and under the industry option on the menu bar. I'll click on the link in the Micromatic map. Well, as you would expect, since I didn't make very many decisions in my first quarter, my company didn't perform very well in this simulation. I sold a little under $900,000 worth of product, but the rest of the company sold quite a bit more than I did. I was towards the bottom in net income, towards the bottom in earnings per share, etc. If I scroll down in this report, I can get a total summary of how I'm doing compared to the competition. 
Frankly, I'm not doing very well compared to the rest of the industry. If I were actually playing this simulation, I would use this information and competitive information I've purchased in the marketing research panel to inform my decisions in future quarters. There's quite a bit more information that Micromatic will give you about running your simulated business. To see some of that information, I switched over to a different sample student who is a little further along in the game. When I bring up Micromatic for this particular sample student, a different panel first appears. This panel is called Industry Dashboard. You'll notice as you play the simulation that the Industry Dashboard will start appearing after the third quarter of play. This dashboard is intended to give you an overview of how well you are doing in your business. We can see that my sample student still isn't doing very well. The student is losing money and is dead last in the industry, as is shown by being sixth of the six companies in the industry. With any of the graphs in Micromatic, you can always drill down to get more information. I just go to the graph that I'm interested in, put my mouse on the line or the bar, and click. And now I can see more information about this aspect of the business. For this particular company, the expenses have grown very high, whereas sales and net income have lagged behind. If I want more information, I can click again to get an even closer view. So that's a good overview of what the simulation is all about. Your next step should be to either experiment with Solo or to watch the tutorial Making Quarter One Decisions, which provides guidance as you get started with Micromatic. I strongly recommend that you take time to view all the tutorials to speed up your learning curve for working with Micromatic. I hope you enjoy playing the Micromatic simulation.